قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أم حسبتم أن تدخلوا الجنة ولما يأتكم مثل الذين خلوا من قبلكم مستهم البأساء والضراء وزلزلوا حتى يقول الرسول والذين آمنوا معه متى نصر الله ألا إن نصر الله قريب صدق الله العظيم The ayah of the Quran that I recited to you comes from Surah Al-Baqarah. The ayah was revealed in the Madani time frame. This is ayah number 214. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directly talking to the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. But the ayah is inclusive of everyone. The ayah talks about that you all want to enter Jannah. If I ask around, do you want to go in Jannah? Everybody will be like, yes, I want to go. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding to that saying, Am hasibtum? Did you think that an tadkhulul jannah, that you will enter the jannah, walamma ya'tikum mathalu alladhina khalaw min qablikum, that the situation of suffering, the situation of test, that was given to the people before you, you will not go through it? And you will just enter the Jannah because, because, just because you said, La ilaha illallahu Muhammadur Rasulullah. No, things don't happen this way. Allah is telling in the same ayah that the people before you, they were afflicted with distress. They were afflicted with hardship. And they were severely shaken to the point where they called upon the prophets of their time and said, When will, when will the help from Allah come? All of our things are exhausted. They reached that point in their lives. Ala inna nasrallahi qareeb. Listen, the help of Allah is definitely near. Why am I bringing this particular ayah today? If you know Islamic months, this is the month of Muharram. The 10th of Muharram was the day when the grandson of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Imam Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhu was martyred in Karbala. A handful of man from Ahl al-Bayt from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were brutally martyred by 4,000 men who used to say that they were Muslims. Now, going back to this ayah, I will connect this ayah with another ayah from the Quran. Then I will connect this ayah with a hadith from Tirmizi so that you understand the picture. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, indeed man is doomed except for those who have believed and have done good deeds, easy part. Believe and do good deeds, easy part. That is difficult. That's what this ayah talks about. That you stand grounds when you are tested. You stand grounds when you are weak, but you side with the truth. This ayah's living example was the incident of Karbala. They were living the Qur'an. Some people mistakenly say, oh, it was the war between the two princes. No, it was not. It was not. It was not political. It was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was the philosophical conflict that I will not bend down to something that I do not feel right. And the person against whom this movement started was not even a movement at this time. Sayyidina Hussain radiallahu anhu, when was asked to take oath of pledge against, to Yazid ibn Mu'awiyah, he said, I need time. People were still in the process of taking oath of the Khilafah of Yazid. 
And in that time frame, he moved out of the Medina because he knew if he remained in Medina, he will be forced to take it. And he want, did not want to make a forced decision, so he moved out. And he moved where? To Mecca. And he was not alone in the process. Other companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, including the grandson of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, whose name was Abdullah ibn Zubair ibn Awam. Abdullah ibn Zubair, his mother, who is the mother of Abdullah ibn Zubair? Asma binti Abi Bakr, Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr. So at one point, you're looking at the grandson of Prophet Muhammad. Alongside, you see the grandson of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu on the same page. They do not want to side with him. On the same page was the cousin of Prophet Muhammad, Abdullah ibn Abbas. On the same page was the son of Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar. And many others, like Abdullah ibn Hunzalah. These people, some of them, moved out of Medina and moved to Mecca. But then they realized that Mecca could become a battlefield. So they, Hussein radiallahu anhu with his family, they started moving towards Iraq. Because those people started sending letters in thousands, because at the time of Ali radiallahu anhu, when he had his caliphate in Iraq, a lot of the people started becoming his followers because that's where his capital was. So the people from Kufa started writing letters after letters after letters, come to us, we will support you. So he started moving in that direction. At this time, the entire Muslim Ummah is not yet united under one king. It's the interim period where the oaths are still getting taken place, the Pledge of Allegiances are still getting taken place. This movement is happening. At that time, the governor of Kufa was lenient towards the family of the Prophet. So he was changed overnight by a very tyrant man by the name of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, who took charge overnight, and he was the governor of the nearby place, and he had both places under him, the Kufa as well as the Basra. And he started sending army outside of the Kufa to close down on the movement of these 72 men with their wives, daughters, kids. And Hussein radiallahu anhu is not a young man, just so that you understand. All of the people that have talked about, this is 50 years after the Prophet sallallahu passed away. Most of these men, the companions are 55 plus. Some are 70 plus that we're talking about here. Abdullah ibn Zubair was born the first year the Prophet came to Medina. So he's at least 60 years at this time. And Abdullah ibn Abbas was even older. Abdullah ibn Umar was even older than Abdullah ibn Abbas. Sayyidina Hassan, Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu anhu was in his mid-50s. These are not young men. These are the people that are grandfathers by this time. And then they are making a move because they do not want to accept something that is forced on them. They do not think that this is the right decision for the ummah. However, the grounds are tightened for them. And they are martyred on this day, the 10th of Muharram in Karbala. The story is long. But I would like to relate this ayah that I have recited to you earlier on, that you think that you will enter the Jannah just like that, with the hadith from a tirmizi where the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Hasan wal Hussein, the Hassan, my grandson, and Hussein, my grandson, Sayyid al-Shababi Ahlil Jannah. They are the Sayyids, they are the leaders of the youth of Jannah. Now, a common man cannot enter the Jannah without making efforts. Do you think these leaders will enter the Jannah without making efforts? Their tests were far greater than our tests. And Prophet Sallallahu made these two grandsons the leaders. And already foretold about that Hassan, this son of mine, will bring the two groups of Muslims back together. 
That's exactly what happened. After Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu was martyred, Hassan radiallahu anhu became the Khalifa of the Muslims, and then Muslim empire was divided among two groups. But Hassan radiallahu anhu withdrew his Khalafa and gave it over to Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, who became one leader of the entire Ummah. Muslims were united under one leadership after five years. And he ruled Muslims for 20 years and nothing, no, nothing, no split happened in those 20 years. It was only after he passed away, his son became the Khalifa. That's when the problem started. Now some of you may be thinking, well, during the time of Ali radiallahu anhu, there was a conflict between Muawiyah radiallahu anhu and Ali radiallahu anhu and Aisha radiallahu anhu and Ali radiallahu anhu as a result the battle of Jamal and the battle of Sifin took place but that was not for power. That was for taking the revenge of the martyr of Uthman radiallahu anhu because he was killed in his own house in Medina. On justice the Muslims were split. Because their ideology of coming to justice was different. You probably might not have read the letter that Muawiyah anhu wrote to the Byzantine emperor when he was thinking of attacking the Muslim empire when Muawiyah anhu and Ali anhu were about to fight in Safin. Because Muawiyah anhu was a governor of the neighboring state of the Byzantine Empire. So he wrote a letter to the governor, to the emperor of Byzantine, saying, Ya Kalbar Rum, O servant of Rome, if you walk on this border to fight against the Muslims, because we are on different fronts right now, remember I will be the first soldier to walk out under the banner of Islamic Empire as my leader. Ali ibn Abi Talib. You think we are divided? We are not divided. We are united. So don't take us lightly. So their fight was not for personal gain. Now this was a totally different thing. Now the tyranny is taking over under the leadership of Yazid. He become, wants to become a leader by force. And, the, and these innocent women and children were enslaved and were taken as slaves to Kufa. From there they were taken as slaves to Damascus. These, this is the family of the Prophet we're talking about. Her granddaughters, her great-granddaughters. Her gra his, 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 great, his, his grandson's wife, his great-grandson's wife's. We're talking about the family of the Prophet being taken as prisoners of war to Damascus. To only to be sent back to Medina with one man alive. That was the only remaining son of Hussein radiallahu anhu. We know him by the name of Zainul Abidin ibn Hussein, but his name was Ali. He was the only one who survived because he was so sick that he could not participate in that war. All of these people come back to Medina. So what do the people of the Medina do? They retaliated. They retaliated under the banner of Abdullah ibn Hunzala, who is another companion, the son of a companion, and they march against the Yazid's army. They were all brutally killed. And that's the battle of Hira we are talking about. And the army enters the Medina, dishonors the Medina, for three days and three nights. And then they have plans of attacking Makkah. Where Abdullah ibn Zubair has openly called upon. I do not take Yazid as my leader. And this army was in the outskirts of Makkah. Was about to attack Makkah. When Yazid had a disease that could not be cured. And he passed away. He died. So Abdullah ibn Zubayr wrote the letter to the commander in general of the army. Why are we fighting? Why are we fighting? Your leader died. You have all those orders are void. So the war never took place. 
And the guy returned back. But during the time of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, few kings after Yazid, because after Yazid, his son Muawiyah, he had a son Muawiyah who sat on the, on the throne for six months and he left the throne saying, this is a disaster. I do not want to rule on the blood of the innocent Muslims. After that, Marwan bin al-Hakam became the king. After him, his son Abdul Malik ibn Marwan became the king. And during his time, he ordered Hajjaj ibn Yusuf to attack Kaaba. For Kaaba was attacked. The Kaaba was burned. Abdullah ibn Zubayr, the companion of the Prophet ﷺ, was killed and hanged for three days in Mecca. This is our history. And these people went through these tests. Why? Going back to the first ayahs that I talked about. That you think you will enter the Jannah and you will not be tested? You will be tested. But your tests will be different. And the Hajjaj ibn Yusuf rebuilt the Kaaba the way it is right now. And this is, this is sad. This is sad. However, however, how do we remember those tyrants? Not in good words. And how do we remember the Ahl Bayt? In very good words. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to Sayyid Saad Qadri.